Hey everyone, Ray from Love Your RV, and today I'm going to install my Christmas present from my lovely wife Anne. This year she got me a new weather station. So about a, maybe two years ago for my birthday she got me a weather station. Uh, it was a lacrosse brand and it was it was just okay. I wanted a more deluxe one I had mentioned at the time. And the, this winter we were in Mojave and there's a super windstorm and actually blew my weather station right off the rig. The pickup smashed on the ground so she felt sorry for me and got me a, a new weather station. Although she really likes the weather station, I have to admit. Anyway, the one she got, came highly recommended through different reviews, is the Ambient Weather. Ambient Weather Wi-Fi Osprey, solar powered wireless weather station. So the model is WS2902A, and it's a lot more advanced than my older lacrosse, although it's not super high end. It's kind of in the mid range. I think it's around $150 or so. But a really interesting thing that it has is it can upload the data to the cloud. It can go through the Wi-Fi and it can upload to weather underground and different places like that or ambient weather has their own their own place to upload it. So you can put it through an app. Pretty cool. Let's flip the box around and look at some of the features it has. So we, here we have wind speed uh, and wind direction as well. My other one didn't have wind direction. It has a UV sensor, which is pretty cool. It can show the sol solar radiation um, through that. So it can kind of maybe help with uh, see how the solar day is going. Uh, bubble level, just to set everything for the, for the best accuracy. And this one also has a rain gauge. So there's a little bucket here that picks up the rain. Uh, it's solar powered, which is nice. Uh, indoor, outdoor humidity, indoor temperature, indoor humidity, all that kind of cool stuff. And it uh, has moon phase, barometric pressure. So let's pull it out of the box and see what's in there. Okay, here's all the pieces out of the box. Quite the substantial uh, owner's manual here. Mounting hardware. So this thing fits onto the top of a, a pole. It's got a mount underneath. There we are. It mounts right there. So battery compartment down there. And it looks like this is probably where the thermometer is. Maybe humidity sensor. Flip it around. This is where the rain gauge is. So this little part's going to fit in there. And then I guess as it fills with rain, it tells you how many inches or millimeters of rain you're getting. We got wind speed and wind direction. Uh, there's a solar panel here for power. There's a bubble level. And then there's something here, I guess you point it north so that you can get the wind speed direction right. And then we got the display. There's a little stand if you want to mount it. Just sit it on a desk. But I'm actually going to mount mine where the other one was. And you can see I've already cut the cord on this. <laughs> already started to damage things. Anyway, I took the cord end off that because I'm going to run it straight into my RV batteries through a DC to DC converter. So let's get that display hooked up first. Then we'll put this together and get outside and temporarily mount it so we can uh, test it out. So here's where it's going to be wired in, the same spot I had my previous uh, display. Uh, this station needs 5 volts DC. So I happen to have a DC to DC converter that I used in my last install and I'm going to use that rather than plugging into it. The plug that it comes with is an AC plug, so I don't want to have to wire it into my inverter circuit or anything. I just want it always working even when we're not hooked up at all or I'm not running my inverter. So what I've done is I've run the wire behind the wall here. And this is my sea level uh, system for tank monitors. It also has my water pump switch and my uh, uh, water heater switch on it. And in pre the previous install, I had draw, drew power off its line 
for the little DC to DC buck converter here. Now this one's adjustable. The last one I needed 7 volts. I only need 5 volts output here. So I'm running the input 12 volts. A little thing that tells you the voltage. 13.2 is my current state of batteries. So And I've set it, adjusted it to 5 volts. Then hook the other side up to the input so that it matches the polarity that uh, the, the new display needs. So you have to be super careful. Um, so I don't not telling you to copy this at all. There's a lot of risks involved. If you don't know what you're doing, you can fry your new weather station. Also, anytime you play with your uh, RV electric like this, you're introducing risks of fire and maybe voiding your warranty. So, not saying copy me or anything. I'm just saying this is what I'm doing. So, it's just for entertainment purposes, not instructional. So, what I plan to do is I'm going to take this and mount it behind in here. I'll probably use some uh, mounting tape or something and mount it on there. I have pretty good trust in these units. This is a Droke, which is a brand name one. And also I used it for over a year with my other weather station. And it's such a such a low uh, current that uh, it never even got hot at all. But I have fused it. Um, of course it has the, there's a seven and a half amp fuse here for this panel. Um, there's also the main 15 amp fuse on the on the DC line and I'm even going to put an extra fuse here I'll probably put this thing draws about one amp so I'll probably put about a one and a half amp fuse here just in case anything goes wrong here also this DC DC, DC to DC buck convert has its own short circuit protection and all kinds of built-in protections but just in the rare rare case something goes wrong and this thing shorts there'll be a fuse to blow here. So let's put that in there and I can put my display up and test it. So everything appears to be working. It's all synced up. See date and time there. Got moon phase. I guess that's what weather's coming. Got your pressure, indoor and outdoor temps, uh, rain. I haven't had any rain. I think I have to calibrate that. There's a little more to this. Um, wind, light, intensity of the light also has UV. This light thing's good for a uh, solar, solar panel. Seeing how much light you're getting. Cool. So the other thing I've done is this thing will uh, connect wirelessly to a router. So I've connected it to our Verizon hotspot. And then I've gone online to ambientweather.net and set up an account. So now I can see this thing transmits to the hotspot and then upload, uploads data to the, the cloud. So I'll be able to see what's going on in the rig and look at it through the phone. And uh, also uh, Google Assistant will, will work through it too. So I'll get that all set up as well. Let's go look at the, the web interface. To get the the new weather station connected to the internet, I had to download this AWNet app on my phone. And then I could go in there and it would find the weather station and I could uh, configure it to work through my router and then out to the internet so they could upload data to a cloud service. Uh, the, or, or also I could get it on this other ambient weather app on my phone. So anywhere that I'm out and about, I can always see what's going on in the RV with my smartphone. And also, I can access that through a web browser. You can see here is uh, my dashboard. So this is, I've got this updating every five minutes. You can go as low as one minute. So it updates to the cloud. So uh, anybody can look at it if I give them the link or if I, if I want to take a look at what's going in the RV. Um, it's a nice interface to look at. Um, we got all the same things that, that were found on the display. But I kind of like this feature here where it shows graphs over time of what's gone, the history of, of the weather that we've been in, which is pretty neat. Here's the pole mount solution I've come up with for the time being. I got this, it's a roughly six foot pole. Um, kind of scoured Home Depot yesterday and they of course had plastic uh, piping and steel piping but I found this aluminum pipe it's actually made by anvil aluminum swagged button handle it's actually a part of a tool to 
for uh, masonry, but I think it's going to work out well. It's a inch and three eighths, and this had said this could handle between one and two inches. So I've hooked it on there, done it up tight. Seems to be very well uh, well attached to there. I think what I'll do is probably uh, swap these nuts out for some wing nuts so I can take it on and off really easily when we travel. I don't want to, of course, drive with this thing on there, um, but I want to make it easy to pull down and put away because I want to put this thing carefully away so I don't break any of the, the wind sensors there. And then I'm going to utilize my existing uh, flagpole mount just for the time being until I, maybe I'll figure something out with the flag or this down the road, but just so we can get this operational. And then I have some uh, Velcro just, just in case. Don't want it to uh, come loose or anything. So let's get that mounted up and we'll give it a try. This mounting setup came with a flagpole I bought uh, in Quartzsite many years ago, must be about five or six years ago, and I've used it for a, a flag for many years. You can see it's got kind of a twisty thing there, so it makes it easy to set the pole in. You don't have to do any hardware up or anything. And then at the bottom there's a, a cup that holds the pole, and I usually just put a, a couple Velcro straps to secure it. That's going to work out good for that. I haven't been using my flag this year because the pole is getting pretty ratty and the thing that holds the flag, the little rings were getting uh, pretty beat up so I think I'm going to have to get myself a new pole. At that time I'll get another uh, set of these uh, mounts and maybe I'll use the other side of the ladder or something. I haven't figured that out yet. You're wondering about this other gizmo. That's my ladder gadget that I installed probably two or three years ago. And I use it a lot for uh, hanging bird feeders on. Right now we got a little uh, hummingbird feeder and uh, they've been coming. Been a little female coming all the time. There you go, look at my new toy. Thanks for watching everyone. I got a few other mods to coming out in the next week or so and then also down the road I'll give this thing a review once we've used it a while. Till next time, Ray from loveyrv.com. Cheers everyone.